Okay, good evening, everybody. Welcome to our advanced session for tonight. Um, from Cape Town Chess Academy side, it is an, indeed a, an honor and a privilege for us to be able to have International Master Watu Kobesi to, to be our guest presenter tonight. Watu has a wealth of experience. Um, I'm sure you will share some of his stories as he goes along, but from our side, we can say that Watu is a is the first Olympiad centurion from South Africa. He is a representative of Africa at numerous Olympiads, and he has played more than 100 games at the Olympiad while representing South Africa. He has also taken quite a few sculpts in the process and so forth. And from my side, knowing him personally, Watu is very humble and very experienced, very, very teachable, and he's a friend to everybody. So we are, we are most honored to have him here with us tonight. And I'm going to hand you over to International Master Watu Kobesi. Thank you, Watu. Thank you very much, Andrew. And uh, thank you very much for having me. And um, yeah, I hope that uh, the, the, our session uh, this evening will be fun. And uh, as well as, uh, you know, uh, Hopefully, you know, there will be something that you, you will be able to take away with, um, with you. All right, so let's start. So our topic today is, uh, you know, the, the initiative really and uh, uh, pawn sacrifice. So sacrificing for the, for the initiative. And um, yeah, let's jump into it. So, um, so um right so what are uh, how how are we going to approach it i wanted to first you know the 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 topic of sacrificing you know uh for the initiative as 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 we all know it's it's not an easy one because there aren't any uh sort of easy to follow rules that are there but i think that um anyway one can sort of make some kind of uh, sort of roadmap um, where not everything will be covered, uh, but, but, but at least if you know some few, some few things, it can be a great start to start from there. But uh, what I would like to say is that, you know, I feel that if one wants to really, uh, you know, improve on this idea of, uh, you know, how to handle the initiative, the best way really uh, at the end of the day is, is, is after sort of a, a lecture like this to, to, to go and, and, and have a look at, uh, at the games of, you know, classical games of well-known uh, players who, who played with the initiative, uh, some world champions and also some other players. Um, right, so the first thing that I wanted us to, to look at was, uh, you know, is a very popular idea in terms of playing uh, uh, for the initiative and that is the the pawn structure you know where the pawns are plays an important role uh, so if, if one side has got a, a number of pawns on white squares for an example then that will mean that the black squares are, are, are quite weak and uh, as a rule it's possible to to, to sacrifice material uh, for this um you know uh, 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 just now as i'm as i'm as i'm as i'm talking to you before we even go into this game uh if you look at at at, at many different openings uh which obviously lead to the to middle game positions we we, we see that this idea uh, you know i'm just thinking for now for example at the so called martial gambit uh which goes something like like this Right and 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 black plays e6 and here white plays e4, so this move was introduced for an example by by Marshall, and 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 so for me the most important thing is besides the fact that okay we say well we can sacrifice here it's it's what can we what can we you know what can we take you know ourselves what can we learn uh, that we can be able to to apply in our own games so yeah the the, the first uh, thing that I uh, want us to talk about is obviously this uh, the, these pawns you know if you look at all these pawns uh, 
you know, all of them on, 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 on white squares, really, uh, it means that, of course, the, the black square bishop is very important. And uh, hence, uh, Marshall, you know, came up with this e4 and the idea is to take knight takes and after bishop b4 check to play bishop d2 and normally black takes and then white takes on b4 and queen takes e4 check so 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 yeah this would this is the starting position of the 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 the, the martial gambit in the slav so uh, uh, it's easy for us to understand how it came about, you know, it came about because Marshall uh, saw the the structure, you know, of, of the pawns being on, on 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 white squares, and understanding that the black square bishop is important, so uh, prepared to give a pawn or two to then be able to attack these these black squares. So um, yeah, this is a very important uh, theme, and um, it's a theme that um, can can one can use in the in the in the opening all the way to the middle game so this game that we look, we look at Alec can played against uh, uh, eleven fish and let's have a look at what happens so okay they they play some normal position and uh, uh, a six and Alec can plays d4 pawn takes pawn and knight takes pawn so immediately uh, it's very important in such positions that you know, we look at uh, the pawn structure, you know, starting with the pawn structure, it will let us sort of uh, understand immediately what is happening. So if we look at Black's pawn structure, we, we, we immediately notice, you know, pawns on a6, b7, uh, uh, d7, uh, e6, and f7, right? All on white squares, which means that the black squares uh, are weak. Uh, but we should not end there. You know, black squares are weak, which then immediately means that the black squared bishop is important. Um, yeah. And then when we look at white's position, we also see two pawns on white squares and uh, a weak square on the black uh, on the black squared d4. So obviously for white as well, the the the, the black squared bishop also important. Okay. Anyway, Lowen Fish plays bishop to b4. Other kind plays bishop e2. They are just developing, and after knight f6, we can fully understand why Alekai plays here, castling kingside. Because you see, the thing is that this this was uh, for me initially uh, something that would be difficult to understand because it's not something you can calculate. You know, you're not able to calculate that. Okay, if my opponent captures on c3, I take back. They capture on e4. What do I do? How do I continue there? But the issue is that this knowledge that the, 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 the black squares are going to be available and we have a black square bishop is, 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 is normally enough. So uh, Alekai and capture, uh, sorry, Eleven Fish captures and takes uh, the pawn on e4. So Alekai takes on, on, uh, on c6 and uh, Eleven Fish takes with the d pawn. Of course, taking with the B pawn uh, will will be very difficult because the knight will be driven away either with queen D4 uh, or something like that. Then the bishop might go to A3 and black might never get out. So uh, it's logical that black takes with the D pawn. Of course, white does not want to, to trade queens here, uh, plays queen C2, and then first things first, just keeps the king in the center. Okay, but the position is, is extremely uh, difficult because white has got three weak pawns, you know, double pawns, weak pawns, no direct threats really, except just that the, 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 the king has been stopped from castling. So of course, white has to be extremely accurate in this position uh, because we can imagine that black would want to play the move c5 at some point, um, you know. So black plays, of course, queen c7 and uh, uh, Alekhine plays queen d2. Now, you know, when, when one looks at Alekhine's games, one will notice this over and over again. This ability to play, uh, this is also a very important skill to, to just be aware of, you, you know, uh, that when you want to, st to stop a specific move, you, you, you look at the whole board and, and, and uh, then you, 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 you will see how to connect you know, how to, to stop a specific move. So for an example, Alekhine is interested in, in making C5 to be difficult to play. Uh, 
and uh, C5 will go to, so the, the, the first thing we do before we calculate variations, we just try to get as much information as possible from the position. So we say to ourselves, okay, the pawn goes to C5, the bishop on A3 is attacking the pawn and the queen is defending, one attacker, one defender. Okay, excellent. Now we look elsewhere and we say, where else uh, do we have uh, something that we can use? And uh, we see that the pawn on G7 uh, is not protected. Right. So obviously this means then that maybe we could be able to, 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 to attack both these pawns at the right moment. So which is not surprising for us that Ali Khan chooses to play the move uh, queen d2. So queen d2, uh, the threat now is to just put the bishop on d6 at the right moment. Notice I'm saying at the right moment because if you play bishop d6 here, black would play knight d4 for an example. Right. So we have to be very careful. But at the right moment, bishop d6, but more importantly, uh, Ali Khan wants to, to put the queen on g5 uh, if, if, if c5 happens so that the, the, the two pawns are attacked. So uh, Levenfish plays c5 and then plays queen g5 and Levenfish plays rook g8. Okay, you know, he's playing to, to, to hold on to the material, but I think here it's already quite 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 difficult it would be difficult to find a modern uh, grandmaster who would be prepared to play this position like this so early you know um yeah he, well look Levenfish realizes that look if he castles here uh in this in this position uh, uh yeah well let's let's this is interesting uh what would you consider here as white's uh, best move how how would you con how would you continue in this position uh, with the white pieces. Any ideas? Oh, yeah, we've got a suggestion. Maybe uh, queen takes c5. Yes. Uh, queen takes c5. Uh, sorry. Yes, sir. Uh, what if um, the bishop captures on c5 and then the rook must move? And then Not necessarily. You, you... Not necessarily. Because if you take on c5 with the bishop, you have to, to count with knight e4. Because knight e4 attacks the queen and the bishop. And, and, and there are also, there's a danger that you could lose your bishop. You, you, you know what I mean? Yes, then, yes, I see now. Yes, so, so, so this becomes a, a, an important question of what to play. So we have two options here. Remember what we are playing for is not, when you sacrifice material, you are not necessarily playing to get the material back but you are playing more than anything for the initiative. So yeah, uh, look, queen takes c5 is definitely a, a, a playable move here. Yeah? Queen takes c5, white can play this and uh, white, you know, uh, uh, could try and, and, and press in this end game, uh, definitely possible. Uh, white will need some, some bit of skill here and, uh, and so on. Um, but I think also there's another way for, for the very daring is Bishop F3, maybe, you know, maybe Bishop F3 is, is also something to consider at least. Uh, well, I'm going to F3 so that I stop any B6 uh, idea. And uh, I'm threatening, now I'm threatening to take on C5 with the Bishop. And uh, Black, if Black wants to keep this pawn, Black will have to play Knight to D7. And, and a Knight D7 means now, that black cannot uh, develop, you know, immediately, right? And 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 I could I could sort of maybe pile on the pressure. Who knows? Maybe rook rook d one or maybe rook e one is also a possibility to stop queen e five. This is possible, uh, you know. Uh, it would be possible, but I think queen takes e five would probably be the the best option. But anyway, the the opponent. I think that was the best option for black anyway was to castle. Uh, but the opponent wants to keep the, the, the everything, plays rook g8. So now when we approach this position, 
uh, we are thinking about initiative. And there are two th things that you always have to think about in such positions. You want to keep the initiative, but you, 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 you always want to say to you, to think to yourself, what does my opponent want to play? You know, how, 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 how is my opponent going to try and get out? Let's ask that question. Let's say we imagine that it is black to play in this position. So that is another very important technique is that you imagine, if you don't see anything forcing, you imagine that it's your opponent's turn to play and you, you are you, you're asking yourself, well, if it was my opponent's turn to play, what would my opponent play? Any ideas? Ninety-seven. Ninety-seven, interesting. But ninety-seven means that you are undeveloping. Means that you 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 cannot move your bishop. But ninety-seven definitely one of the moves that black can play. But you, do you think it would be the strongest move? I don't know. I have my reservations. Um, let me raise up the hand. Come on. Remember, just press over. Any ideas? Raise hand. Okay. Uh, we've got some, some B6. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, B6 to me uh, is, is uh, 94 possible. But remember, the knight on e4 is not is not necessarily uh, uh, defended. You know, I could play queen uh, e black. Let's say back to e3, attack the knight still, and and so on. But b6 for me, uh, you know, there was a suggestion of b6. This move would would because b6 means it means that black can play bishop b7, and then you know take the pieces out. So it's not surprising though that that Alekhine decides to play here bishop to f3. Right. Oh, uh, Mickey, you are raising your hand. Oh, okay. Uh, all right. Uh, no problem. Let's go on. So, Bishop F3. Uh, Knight E4. Yeah, yeah. Knight E4 was definitely uh, also a move. That's, that, that would have been played. I agree. So 94 or B6, but I think B6 is stronger to play Bishop B7. Mm. But 94 is also, also possible. That's why Alekhan plays Bishop to F3. So now the, the, the notice something interesting here. When you sacrifice material for the initiative, your main idea is not necessarily to get the material back. Because if you cash in to Ellie, you, you find that the returns are not that much. You know, so you don't want to go queen takes c5, uh, maybe here in this position, necessarily, because maybe the opponent can play like this, you know, and, and yeah, yeah, you know, the knight, the, 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 the pawn on c3 is attacked, and, and white will play, black will play bishop d7, bishop c6, and we've got double pawns on the c file. Maybe white is still slightly better, but now very difficult to 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 play for a, a a win realistically in this position because the knight wants to go to c5 and i don't see how we can continue uh, to play for a win here so uh, very important not to take the, the material back unless um, you are fully ready bishop f3 stops uh, the pawn from moving the opponent plays knight d7 but now notice that the opponent is now more or less forced Right to play knight d7 because otherwise we would play bishop takes uh, 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 bishop takes c5. So the opponent plays knight d7. We go back to our our technique. We want to continue. We want to play a move. But remember, very important to always ask yourself what the opponent will play. So before we do anything, we then look at the position again and say, well, if it if it were black's turn to play. Which move do you think black will play? And that will influence your decision to play a move here. So which move would you play as white? So two uh, parts of the question. Number one, what will the opponent play? And what would you play first? So any ideas of how we would play in this position? Okay, we've got a, a, a suggestion. Uh, rookie one, yes, absolutely. Rookie one is, is, is the best move. Because the opponent would like to play the queen to e5 or knight e5. So rookie one 
uh, is the move that Alekhan <laughs> plays is the best move in the position. The, 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 we don't want to, 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 to get our material back for now. We want these pieces to get into the game. We want to think about, you know, organizing a, a, a second wave, so to speak. So the opponent plays rook to a7, probably wants to play b6 and to get the, 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 the bishop involved. Alekai notices that the bishop on a3 is now less effective, moves it to c1. Remember, we are hitting the black squares. So wants to put the bishop on f4, and then the bishop can go to d6. And the bishop will then be in a position to attack those black squares again. So the opponent plays h6, queen h5, threatening. There's a little threat here. Threatening rook takes um, e6 check. Yeah, the, the, pawn, the pawn on f7 is pinned. So opponent plays knight, uh, okay, king uh, e7. Uh, is there a question? Yes, yes, yes. Black would definitely want to exchange the pieces because black has not uh, uh, fully developed. So definitely. Uh, okay, black, he plays king e7 Thank to you. stop rook takes. Um, Alekhine plays check. Knight f6. Bishop f4 is logical. Plays Queen to a5, right. So here we are. Uh, how would you consider playing in this position? You should be careful because the opponent could play g5. So two threats, g5 possible, and queen takes c3 is possible. I don't know which one you would fear more, And uh, but uh, what would you consider playing in this position as, as white? And we should not forget to, to also always think what the opponent will play. Very important question. Bishop okay, let's e5. look at what, excuse me? Bishop e5. Bishop e5 is, 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 is certainly uh, uh, a move. Bishop e5, um, yeah, Bishop e5. Probably would the opponent will play something like rook d8. Uh, maybe, yeah, bishop e5, maybe rook d8, maybe b6, but definitely uh, bishop e5 is a move that is possible. But you see, Alekhine wants to do a number of things. Uh, wants to stop the rook from coming to d8, should the rook want to. Wants to stop queen takes c3. So he, may, he plays this multi-purpose move, which is queen g3. It's a fantastic move. He gets out of the the, the possibility of the fork, uh, defends the pawn on c3 by tactical means. The pawn is defended. Uh, can we see how this pawn is defended? By tactical means, and rook d8 is not possible because rook d8 then maybe queen takes g7 is possible. But why is queen takes c3 impossible in this position for black? Now, we, it's important for us Discovered. to look at Exactly, exactly. There's a pattern here, right? The queen attacks the, 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 the other queen should the bishop not be here. So it's clear what we'll play. We'll play bishop d6 check. The king dare not go to any white square. So the king must go to d8, bishop c7 check. The king must go to e7 then, queen d6 check. The king goes to e8 and queen d8 checkmate, right? So if any if at any point the king goes to a, a, a white square, bishop c6 will, will be played and queen takes c3. Yeah. So well, the queen cannot take on c3. Very powerful move is queen g3, multi-purpose move. Opponent plays bishop d7. Now we have to cash in. We have to attack the, the black square. So bishop c7, queen takes c3, queen d6 check, king e8, and now bishop b6. So now that we want to put our bishop on c5 and it will be it will be game over. And okay, the opponent tries to survive, Bishop takes b7, and the opponent resigns. A very nice game, very clean, but more important for us is to understand the ideas. The most important idea was to understand why we could sacrifice the pawn, why Alekhine chose to sacrifice the pawn. And the answer was Alekhine noticed the pawn structure, that the pawns are on white squares, and the black squared bishop is important because it's an important defender of the, the squares. The next important thing that we saw was all the time uh, uh, prophylactic thinking 
always thinking what the opponent would want to play to play next. Uh, okay, we had an op a, 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 a Rook D1 suggestion. Yes, that was also possible, but I think the way that Ali Khan handled that position was quite, uh, was very strong. Now, I always say that, you know, after we, 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 we learn, uh, after we, we, we see a, a, um, a, a concept, what we want to do is we want, we would like, there are two ways to, to realize whether you've uh, improved. The first thing is that the concept, you need to be able to see in another game, right? So you are either watching the game or you're playing through the game. Then you'll have to say, hey, wait a second. Now I understand why player A is sacrificing the pawn because these pawns are on those squares and that bishop is important, okay? The other, the next one, which is what we are looking for, is that you are then able to play this in your own game, right? So, uh, well, uh, I, I I played this game. I will show my game. I played against Dennis of China. It was played in one uh, uh, SA closed championship. When was it? Twenty eleven, uh, some some time ago. And uh, yeah, let's have a look at this game. Uh, so I was playing with the white pieces, yeah? So I played, okay, normal uh, Sicilian, yeah? And uh, my opponent plays the timer off. Okay, castles plays, you know, we, we're just developing our pieces, yeah? And, and my opponent plays bishop to b4. This is uh, one variation of the timer off. It's not the main, it's the main line, actually. There are two ways to play this position, bishop e7 or bishop to b4. Now, after bishop to b4, we, we realized it's still theory, but now we realize that what is happening uh, we are able to, to see a structure that is familiar to a classical game that we know because the pawns are on white squares, the black squares are important, right? You're right, so the knight a4, this is not my move. It's, 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 it has been played before. Uh, the idea is to, is to attack the black squares. The, the main idea of this move is to play c4 followed by, by c5. It's, it's a fight for the initiative from, from the wet go. So my opponent castles, it lines the pawn for now, but I offer it again um, with, with, with c4. My opponent plays bishop d6. Okay, there are a number of, 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 of tactics that one has to know. Uh, knight takes e4, for an example, is not possible in this particular position because white has this move c5. But look, it's not something I saw. It's, it's something I know, right? It's theory. It's, it's something you study. You look at games before, as we all know. So now the, the bishop is locked in. The problem now is that it doesn't matter how, 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 how black captures this pawn, but black gets into a pattern. Because you see, if this happens... If black decides to capture the, the, the knight, of course, rook c1 drops a piece, right? I'll play before next. And if black decides to capture on e3 first, white plays knight e7 check, right? And then white captures the bishop. And then the knight will capture this bishop and white is just a clean, pawn, a clean piece up. Okay, so, so that means the, the, the pawn cannot be captured now. Um, here, the main line is bishop to e7. The, this is the main line. Uh, but my opponent played bishop d6. It's also possible to attack h2. So I played g3. Um, notice that, that, that I'm playing g3. Why? Because the black squared bishop is important. And when the idea is at some point to be able to attack the black squares. So that, that is why this g3, the pawn is still offered. And now my opponent, well, uh, either they take the pawn or they don't take the pawn, but next I'm playing c5, right? So my opponent decides, okay, let's grab the pawn. So I play, I play c5. The pawn is still not, not, not uh, capturable. Uh, this time I will, I will, I showed you the other version with the knight. This time I will take with the bishop, uh, but it's the same, same old story, yeah? Still, the the, the 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 pawn cannot be captured because rook c1 is coming and and, and claiming the the piece. So uh, it means okay, the opponent played bishop to e5. Okay, what is happening now? Prophylactic thinking. So now we have to say to ourselves, well, if it if it was my opponent's turn to play, what would my opponent attempt to do? The opponent is is worried about these pieces. So we are a, a, a pawn down now, but it's not important. 
because we are fighting for weak squares, the same way as Alekhine did. So we learned, you know, from Alekhine and other players. So the opponent has got these two pieces at the moment that are, 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 are stuck, you know, sort of not in the game. Opponent would like to put these pieces in the game, of course. So the opponent would like to play something like d6, d6 uh, to, 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 to get the pieces out. So first f4, and uh, uh, well, my opponent is worried, you know, if that if they play bishop to f6, at some point I might play bishop f3. I'm saying at some point because I would start first with rook c1, okay? But my opponent captures the knight. Now this is what, uh, 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 yes, is there a question? Oh, okay, yeah, there is a comment. Um, uh, what about the hanging pawn? Hmm. Okay, let's go back. The, yes, yes, yes. But that was the, the one I was explaining. I could explain it again. The pawn on the pawn on, on c5 is not hanging. Right? Be, because of that variation that I showed. So you cannot play knight takes c5, knight takes, bishop takes, knight takes c6. Right? You cannot take on e3 because of knight 7 check. And if queen takes to c1 and there's a pin, next comes b4. Right? So the pawn is not hanging. Okay. Um, so I hope that answers that question. So after bishop e5, f4, and now my opponent played bishop takes d4. Of course, I'm, I'm very happy to see this move because all the time we were looking for that bishop. We're always looking at putting, you know, the black squares under pressure. And once the opponent agrees to exchange this bishop, it makes life much easier for white. Okay, but my opponent has, is under the impression that after f5, they, they kind of lock the position and they, they then have to work on getting the bishop out. Okay, bishop f3, they defend the bishop with queen c6, knight b6, rook uh, to uh, uh, b8, and now I have to defend the pawn and my opponent plays <clears throat> rook to d8. Okay, uh, bishop g2, queen c7, and now bishop takes e4 and queen d6. This is actually very interesting because it's, it, it is, you know, uh, and actually my opponent resigns here um, because th there we go, you know, those black squares that we're after, what we, we saw from Alekhine's game, we are seeing the same thing here. The opponent cannot play queen c6 because of b8 is hanging, so the opponent will have to take the queen, but after pawn takes pawn, the game is, is, is easily won for white. The bishop cannot move and will be captured, you right? So white will just move uh, the king, you know, to e3, right? Double the rooks on the c file, capture the pawn and take the bishop with the rook. Rook takes bishop and, 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 and black can resign. So yeah, the, the game became of course uh, relatively easy, but we can, we can tell of course that it was, uh, you know, because I, I had that foundation from understanding about, you know, pawns on the same color and the idea that you can sacrifice a pawn to get the initiative, but your key, the, the, what you actually are looking for is that bishop that will be defending the squares. All right, so that, that concept, you will, you'll be seeing it in many other uh, uh, games as well. So I wanted us now to go to the next con concept. And the next idea, uh, uh, so you remember it is about ideas and, and it's very, it's actually impossible for you to, to, to come up with these ideas unless you've, you've, I won't say impossible, but very difficult, unless you have seen them before, right? So it's, it, it, it's, it's very important to, uh, uh, like for example, as, as we are talking here, I would suggest that we, we kind of make notes, you know, and say, okay, one, uh, pawns on the same color. Uh, right? The bishop is important. We want to we sacrifice the pawn to get the bishop. Uh, the next one is uh, uh, a line clearance. The, the, the idea of, 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 of sacrificing a pawn to, to open up a square, to open up a, an important square, you know, as the, that the pawn is, is uh, um, occupying. And uh, there's a very 
beautiful classical game that was played between uh, Oive and Oive played against uh, uh, um, Nidov. And uh, uh, yeah, this game is, is actually uh, a very po a powerful uh, game, famous game. Um, in chess space, uh, for example, it is annotated by none other than Gary Kasparov um, because it's a game that was, that had an impact you know, to, 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 to how we look at, at chess today. Right, so let's go through this game. Uh, Max Oive was uh, a, a world champion, former world champion. He beat Alekhine, but then Alekhine won the title back from Oive. And uh, uh, actually, yeah, so this, this, this one was, he was now an ex-world champion, but still a very strong player, of course. And he played against Miguel Nidoff and uh, two very strong players. Right, so let's, let's have a look and see what happens. Okay, they know they play normal, normal developing moves and um, C5. However, this move is not uh, normal. Normal move here is E6 or D6, uh, like that. But okay, uh, the opponent plays, plays E5. And immediately after the opponent uh, plays E5, we can imagine that uh, uh, Oive immediately tries to punish this move because it's not a, it's not a normal move. Um, it tries to see what, what, are the, what could be the problem of this move and so on, you know, what are the, what are the disadvantages? Anyway, I comes up with a very interesting concept, plays bishop g5. So now the, the issue is that if black plays d6 in this position, white plays queen d2. And what is happening here is that this pin is a little bit uncomfortable, you know, for, 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 for black. And, uh, you know, not easy, not easy at all. Uh, so, of course, after bishop g5, h6 will, will, must come, right? But now, Oive has made this concept. He's made the concept. This, this, this idea is got in mind. And he plays here, bishop captures f6. Now this move must have must have shocked Nidov. Uh, you know, we, we we cannot imagine that Nidov saw the idea. He was a good player, but this idea, you know, definitely took him by surprise. So he takes on f on f6, and Nidov takes back with the queen, and now comes the real idea. Oiver plays d6. What a move! Exclamation mark. Exclamation mark. Now this move, d6, it's again a, a, a position which we cannot calculate. However, there are a few things we can see. Number one, we can see that the, the, the pieces are struggling to get into the game. Okay, one can say, yeah, but the knight can go to c6. However, if the knight goes to c6, we shall play e3. E3 to stop the knight from coming to D4. And we have these three pieces, uh, you know, being on the queen side, having difficulty to, to, to re-enter the game. That's the, the first point. The second point is that now all of a sudden, this is, this is fantastic. This is fantastic. And, you know, when you see this game, you appreciate the strength that Max uh, Oiver had. Wants to put the bishop on D5. So, so, so what has happened is that uh, he has sort of cleared the square, you know, by moving the pawn forward uh, and the bishop will go to d5, but that's not the end. The issue, now you realize that the whole board is connected. It's very important that we play the, the whole board. 94, yes, 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 yes. 94, uh, someone... Uh, 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 Someone suggests uh, uh, 94. Yes, 94 is, is, is certainly a, a, a move that is there, but not looking at 94. The move that Black is looking at, uh, White is looking at, is Bishop D5. Bishop D5 first and then 94. And the reason why Bishop D5 is strong is because uh, 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 Black has played H6. So H6 has made G6 a little bit soft. Right? So G6 is soft because 
the bishop sits on d5. And then what do we see? We have not castled here. So we, we see a plan, right? So we can imagine the plan that, that Max oversees. He will put his bishop on d5, right? The pawn on d6 can be captured, doesn't matter. Then uh, if the knight goes to c6, he will put the pawn on e3. And then after that, he will play h4 and h5. And then attack the king. That is the, that is, that is the idea. A fantastic idea. So knight to six, e3. Very good move to stop this knight from uh, getting into the game. Uh, uh, knight of place b6. Of course, worried about the, the pieces and defend and sorry and defending the the pawn on c5. Wants to play bishop b7, bishop b7 and knight a5. You know, like this. And then now comes that plan: bishop d5. Uh, so king h8, knight e4. Queen, so king h8 to get out of this pin, right? And now h4 is played. Now there is something in chess called pattern. Now a pattern, pattern recognition is very important. Uh, for example, two pieces on the same color is a pattern. I mean, big pieces. For example, queen and rook, this is a pattern. They are on both on black, so... If it's for example, pawn on e7 will attack both of them. Oopsie. Pawn on e7 will attack both these pieces. Bishop on e7 will attack both these pieces. Right? Knight on e6 will attack both these pieces. You see what I mean, right? So th that is how the, the pattern, the, the pattern, we recognize a pattern based on the way the placement of the pieces. There is also another pattern uh, based on the king. The, 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 when the, 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 the position, the, 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 the squares around the king become limited, that is a pattern. So now, for an example, uh, after uh, uh, a, a knight of plays a five, the king only has two squares, h8 and, eight and h7. So the king is in a pattern. And now Max Oiver plays knight to g5. What a move. Not possible to take this knight because now h takes g5 and check. So now uh, bishop b7. We come now to the second. We saw this concept in the Alekhine game where Alekhine uh, against Levenfish was playing for the initiative and Alekhine had the, 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 the option, the opportunity to cash in, right? To, 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 to. To, to, to take uh, uh, the pawn, but chose not to, to do that. Rather better to keep the initiative. So Knight of here offers Oive uh, 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 the opportunity to cash in, to play Knight of seven check. Rook takes and Bishop takes, but then the, the black pieces will explode. So it's very important not to be materialistic, not to think only about material, think about the rest of your pieces. So Knight of seven is a very bad move. Because rook takes f7, and now all of a sudden, look at this. Now it is it is it is the black pieces that would 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 would, would explode. Look at the patterns that are there, right? The, you would move the rook. The bishop might come to e4, knight d3, knight c2. All of a sudden, you are going to be in trouble. So uh, no, we don't want the the exchange. This knight is much stronger. We bring uh, uh, more pieces into the game. G4. That's a beautiful move. The idea is to attack this pawn on g6. That pawn on g6 has been a problem ever since h6, which leads me to the, 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 the very important uh, talk. You know, many players like to play h3, h6, uh, you know, afraid of the pin, but we should not do this. You know, this we, we stop doing this as beginners. You have to understand when you push anything on your, on your king side, h3, h6, you are making potential weaknesses and potential targets for your opponent in the future. So here in this position, the pawn on g6 is already very much in, in Max Oiver's, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, eye sort of, right? So uh, tries to play e4 to open for the bishop. And the knight comes in. The knight wants to jump in now to f4. Bishop takes b2. This bishop is more important than this rook. Because the bishop is defending the king. So who cares about the rook? Knight goes into f4. 
playing for an attack. Uh, attacking gear is, is obviously suicidal, yeah? Uh, this would be the, the move and, and all the pieces are just coming in. White, black would not be able to defend. So, so, so plays queen f6 and takes on f5, takes on a1 and takes on g6 uh, check. King g7 takes on e4. So now we're clearing the way for the big pieces to come in. And here, after queen takes f4, plays knight f4, very strong move. Now it's threatening to enter uh, with the with the with the strong with the big pieces. Plays king h8. Now knight takes. Yeah, they give uh, the, Kasparov gives the variation. For example, bishop e5, uh, knight g3, so that the queen can come to g4. Queen g4 check check, and uh, yeah, trouble for black. Um, okay, so, so so played king h8, knight takes c3. Let's go very quickly now. Uh, it's clear that black's position is 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 bad. Notice here, it offers the rook, you know, instead of taking this rook, because this would, would, would let the pieces get into the game, plays h5, you know. Uh, so yeah, not, not to be materialistic, let's to put more pieces in to the attack is the idea. And they reach this position. And it's clear, it's clear that um, uh, although the material is, is equal, sort of, um, but black is lost. The, the king is just too weak. Yeah? And uh, king g7 and, 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 and black resigns. A fantastic game. So now this time we saw uh, uh, the idea of a sacrifice as a line clearance, uh, uh, you know, where the pawn moves forward and the pawn, so now we realize that uh, 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 the idea of holding pieces uh, 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 together is, is a very powerful uh, idea. You know, holding the pieces in, 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 in making sure the pieces don't, 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 don't uh, uh, develop. Right, so we are going to, to now have a look at uh, uh, a, a few ideas where this game was played. Uh, but I, 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 will, I will go a little bit faster just to go to the key positions, because uh, just important for me is, is, is just to show the, the, the position and the idea. So uh, uh, here we see Romanishin plays against Polokayevsky. Uh, let's have a look very quickly at this game. Uh, okay, they play just normal, developing, and uh, we'll, we'll come to the critical position and uh, round about here. Uh, yeah, around about here, we reach this critical position. And, uh, well, again, we see, you know, that, uh, uh, you know, uh, white wants the pieces to go and, and wants to attack, you know, the queen is ready to go to h5, but th there isn't enough pieces. We need to get more pieces into the game. And any ideas now, but now we know this idea that the idea of sacrificing a pawn to clear the lines, to use the square where the pawn was before, and this and this and that. So any ideas here, how we could do that uh, in this position? Back to play. Um, F5. F5. Okay. Careful. Uh, F5. F5. Yes, indeed. But F5, you're blocking your pieces. Let's let's have a look. Let's have a look at 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 you know when you play when you play f5. Uh, well, I play for example bishop f7, and now look at this beautiful square e5, and I will use the square for my knight. My knight will come to e5. My bishop is open. You want the same idea because you want to attack, but why don't you start? That you need to sacrifice a pawn first. Play, sacrifice a pawn, then play the idea. So the, the idea, uh -huh, we have we have uh, uh, ideas here. Um, let us see. Wouldn't something like e five be considered? Yes, yes, yes. That is that is the point. That is the idea. We we, we play e five. The bishop gets into the game, and uh, once we play e five, then grabs. Then we play f five. Now we can see that all. First and foremost, the, 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 the black, the opponent's pieces are not able to get into the game. And we have created, for example, this e4 square, the bishop can sit nicely there. 
Imagine the bishop on e4, the queen on h5, and every white piece, well, not yet every, because that rook on a1 is not in the game, but many white pieces are in the game. So bishop f7, bishop g5, bishop d5 check, right? So now again, look at the, the, the poor king, right? So he's, he's, he's weaving a net around this, this, this king, and um, we can tell that uh, that black is in big trouble. So uh, yeah, black took you know the 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 the, the bishop, but uh, okay, it's going to be it will not be saved by by this. But too many p white pieces are, are are attacking. Tries this, but of okay, okay, of course we can tell that there's no way that uh, black should be able to survive this. Um, I'm going very quickly uh, because you know it's 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 clear that uh, you know black is in big trouble. Um, so it's it's from the the same uh, concept, and uh, I just and and then I'm going to show another. So I'll just show some very quickly, very quickly, just so that we understand this concept. Um, uh, here's a next another game. Um, let's quickly go to uh, key position. Okay, they played like this. Right, so we are around uh, this position, and um, yeah, what to consider here as as uh, to play in this? Okay, first it builds it. Uh, okay, builds it first, and I think here it should be it should be starting to get ready probably around here. Any ideas how we would uh, consider playing here as white? Okay. F5, mm -hmm. well, let's also think about the opponent's pieces. Uh, at the moment, at the moment, very important. Look at all the pieces. Look, at the, let's look at the queen side pieces. The rook is not in the game. The bishop is not in the game. The knight is not necessarily in the game. If you play a move like F5, you know, the argument may be you might liberate these pieces. The knight might come to E5, the bishop will start to move. The rook can also move, you know. So you want to attack, but you don't want to help the opponent. So any idea of how we can maybe do this? Um, e5. 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 Yes, e5. And E5. after the opponent takes, now what do we play? F5. And now F5, yeah. So uh, same idea. And notice how the position is transformed. Now, all of a sudden, it's the white pieces that get into the game. The black pieces are denied access to the, to the game, right? So, and after this, okay, the game continues, but black is always going to be struggling, always going to be struggling, and, and uh, we'll never, everything is working, you know, because all the pieces are, are there, you know, and, 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 black, and black was obviously in, in exactly, if I followed by F5, yeah, correct? Um, uh, uh, so now let's have a look at, uh, uh, so there's, there's a whole bunch of, 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 of games that we can, we can look at and, um, uh, we're going to jump that because we have a number of things that we want to talk about. Um, so the next one that we will talk about, um, is a, a game that was played by uh, Capablanca, and uh, Capablanca was 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 uh, incredibly strong. Uh, of course, you know he he became a world champion, and um, uh, yeah, this game he plays against uh, Nimzovic, and uh, it's an amazing game. Uh, this game actually. Uh, paves the way for the Benko Gambit. So the Benko Gambit is is there's a line that Black plays, which is which is like this, yeah. It's 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 an opening that Black plays. Black plays c5, and White plays d5, and Black plays b5. Pawn takes pawn, and Black plays a6, right? Then uh, takes and Black plays g6. This is a the, the, the so-called Benko Gambit, yeah, or Volga Gambit, but 
yeah, Benko, and then, you know, D6, Bishop G7, Castles, and so on and so on and so on. Uh, anyway, this game that Capablanca plays, um, we can even argue that had Capablanca not played this game, maybe the, 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 there would not have been the idea of playing the Benko, okay? So let's have a look at this at this game. And this will, will, will show you actually um, um, that actually, um, yeah, we have a, a hand. Well, okay, yeah, uh, uh, someone says maybe they don't understand yet, yes. So you will understand once we see this game, yeah. Um, I just wanted to show before I, I, I was showing, I showed this, this game. So um, Nimzovic was playing with the white pieces. Plays, uh, they play just normal opening, bishop b5, and Capablanca plays uh, the so-called Steinitz uh, defense, d6. Yeah, okay, plays d4, plays bishop d7. Uh, so this has been known since the, the beginning of time. Uh, white cannot win a pawn like this because of course, black uh, also attacks the pot on e4 with two pieces. Um, so um, yeah, the main move I think is something like queen d3 in this position or, or something like that. But uh, anyway, no, or taking in queen d3, yeah, sorry. This is the main way to take and then play queen d3, right. So um, yeah, this is a, a, a small advantage for, for white. Uh, but you know, we can appreciate uh, uh, Capablanca's strength because here Capablanca he he thinks and then he comes up with an amazing concept, an amazing concept. He takes on d4, and then he plays g6. Incredible. Let's see what the idea is. So when Capablanca plays g6. Uh, but okay, this is not played today because a remedy was found against it. You know, that white could have played bishop g5. If white plays bishop g5 and after bishop g7, white castles long, the position is, is not losing, but it's quite difficult for black. And, and, and there's been some games that were played uh, uh, before with this and, and, and black is struggling. However, uh, nonetheless, we cannot it cannot be we cannot take away from uh, 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 Capablanca's concept. So Nimzovic doesn't see anything wrong with taking on c6 and playing queen a6. The, the, the point now is that remember we said when you are playing, you also have to, to look at patterns. And patterns uh in many cases, you know, it's where you, you are looking at one piece, two pieces, three pieces. So here there's a pattern. The pattern is the king on e8 is on a white square and the rook on, on a8 is also on a white square. So queen a6. So it means that now, for an example, if you played c5, black or white will play queen c6 check. You cannot play queen d7 because the rook will hang. And if you play knight to d7, possible move is bishop g5. And this is big, big, big trouble for, for black, probably losing this position. So, so it was clear to, to, to both players, okay? Uh, uh, but but Capablanca is setting a, a, a trap, a positional trap, you know, it's of the highest level. So queen a6 is played and Capablanca plays queen d7. And uh, 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 Nimzovic plays queen b7 uh, to attack the rook. Capablanca plays rook c8 and Nimzovic takes the pawn on a7. So, so what, what, what to think here? So, I mean, uh, um, Nimzovic, I'm sure after he takes on a7, he was thinking, okay, Capablanca, it's not Capablanca's day today. He's normally extremely strong, but today he's, he didn't play so well. And uh, yeah, I get a chance to, to beat him. The, he probably thought, okay, this is going to be like a nice and easy game here. Uh, I'm already a pawn up and um, it's going to be finished. Before we go on, let us now come back and say, what's happening? What's going on? 
why does Capablanca think that this is playable? Right? Why, why is it thinking that this position is playable? And it, it, it's fascinating. So what Capablanca is, is, is thinking, or rather that, that Capablanca sees, is that there are two files here that are important. The A file, the B file, and the C file. The C, well, the C file. file is, the C file is closed. Remember, the pieces that can use files are rooks. So the one rook will be able to use the A file. The other rook will be able to use the open B file. So these are files, they are open for, for black. So they are half open files, right? They are only open for one side, black. And then the other important point here is that there is a diagonal here that is very strong. Yeah, the H8 to A1 diagonal is very powerful. And, uh, and uh, 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 okay, there's something else, you know, but let this, this is what Carablanca saw and Carablanca thought, okay, I will get play here. And, and why? Why is Carablanca thinking they will get play? Because we're going back now, now you see a connection. You see a connection with initiative. And the connection is the, 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 the difficulty in, 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 in getting pieces into the game. Capablanca notices that uh, White is going to struggle to get the pieces into the game. Okay, so, all right, White castles, Black castles, and now uh, you must come back with your queen because otherwise our, uh, Black will play C5 and your queen might get uh, uh, trapped, yeah? So the queen must come back. Now rook e8, and now Capablanca plays queen e6. This is now pure class. Capablanca has, not has noticed something else. So we talked about the, the half open a file. We talked, we talked about the half open b file. We talked about the, the diagonal, a8 to h8 or h8 to a1. The, the third, uh, well, fourth thing, is that the knight can make its way to c4. The knight wants to sit on c4 because it's going to be very difficult for, for, for white to play the move b3 because that diagonal is, the, the bishop is controlling that diagonal. So the knight is going to sit on c4 and there's going to be trouble. So queen e6, first and foremost, black attacks the pawn on e4. Doing it with tempo. Remember we said also, tempo is important, right? Attacks e4. So f3 must come in. Now knight d7 is coming. So next move, knight e5 is coming. So the opponent plays bishop d2. Knight e5, queen e2, knight c4. Rook b1, rook a8. The rook captures, takes the first file, or rather first uh, half open file. Now it means the knight cannot move, but mainly... Capablanca wants to play also rook e to b8. And then, you know, you cannot play b3. If you play b3, you allow uh, 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 the a3 uh, square becomes weak also. So, tries a4. Now takes on d2 and then plays queen c4. Now, you see why a4 was played. The reason why Nimzovic plays a4. Nimzovic wants to play b3. So that the, the, these uh, pawns on these files are actually defending each other, you see. Uh, then the rooks may not be so powerful. So it takes on d2 and then plays queen to c4. This is very interesting because we see this concept. And this concept has, has actually, um, is still a, a playable today in the Bengal Gambit where you will see one side with a pawn down, but the pressure that the, the, the one side has is enough to, to have compensation, you know. So, so, so now uh, 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 black is a, is a pawn down, but white is fighting for a draw. Amazing. You know, so white plays rook d1. We don't cash in. We don't cash in. We don't take the knight and, 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 and because, you know, you take the knight, queen takes, 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 rook takes, maybe rook b7. And, and then maybe better, but 
why do that? You know, you don't, you don't, you don't all of a sudden want to cash in too quickly because you know things like this might happen. All right? Things like this might happen. This is not what you want. I'm just making an example, you know, and if you take Rook D7, just a, a wild example. Um, so instead, uh, Rook B8, all the pieces are brought into the attack. The Rook goes to B8, so the opponent plays Queen E3, Rook B4. Now we want to play Rook B8, maximizing the pressure on the position. Queen G5, yeah, this is already desperation. Bishop D4 check. And uh, 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 the opponent plays king h1, rook b8. The threat is bishop takes c3, and then the rook is hanging. Uh, so he sacrifices, you know, the, the, the exchange. But okay, <laughs> we already see that um, white is not going to be able to hold a draw here. Yeah, it's 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 a lost position, and uh, and there we are. And uh, okay, we can look very quickly. And uh, and 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 Nimzovich resigned. So you know, when you look at this game, and and you imagine that Capablanca played this game in 1914. In 1914, and Capablanca played this idea clean, without having seen it before. Then you you understand why you know many people consider him as a chess genius because he was doing not only in, in this game, he was he was doing this, you know, things like this uh, in many games, you know, uh, amazing, you know, amazing, amazing. Uh, uh, another amazing Capablanca story as I'm opening the next game. Um, Capablanca, uh, uh, there's a story about uh, Frank Marshall, where Frank Marshall uh, analyzes the variation for eight years, eight years, he analyzes this variation, Marshall, yeah? you know, different ideas, probably plays friendly games against friends and they, they you know, and they analyze and so on and so on. And, uh, and then uh, he's waiting for the right opponent to play this idea. And then the right opponent presents, you know, the opportunity presents itself and, 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 and Marshall plays against Capablanca. And Marshall plays this, 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 this idea for the first time against, he's been having this idea for, for, for more than eight years. I think it was 10 years he has it, right? But then he springs the surprise on Capablanca. And Capablanca finds the refutation, you know, of the one line. And uh, incredible. He finds it on the board. You know, I mean, um, yeah, so, so it was quite uh, impressive. Anyway, we have, now we're going to see a game that was played in 1953, uh, much later. Uh, but, but the players who are playing this game now, they play this, this, this they take this concept and 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 they play it but what i want to 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 show you is that what you have to understand about chess is that you 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 need to be very flexible we need to be very flexible mentally i'll make, i'll make an example you know when you when you you hear um Benko gambit yeah 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 you know of course but but it, you also have to be able like for example, in in a in a position like this, I'm just making an example. You you it's still possible with white even to play like that. It's the same idea that Capablanca came with, because you are going to have this diagonal and you are trying to get these these two half open files. You know, so so it, it's not just in one direction that you must look at an, a chess idea. You must look at it in many different directions, and 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 it, it, it you you must you know be able to be influenced by the idea, uh, you know. Um, anyway, um, so we, as we see this game and uh, they play in 1953 and then Bronstein plays B5. Right, so uh, uh, Tamanov takes and uh, castles and then he plays A6. Now we are no longer surprised. So now we are no longer surprised by this, by this, by this idea. When we see the idea and having seen the Capablanca game, we understand everything. We, we now know that Black wants to have the two half open files here, and Black wants to have this diagonal and here. And Black wants to, to get to the square C4, right? So Black will play knight G4, knight E5, knight C4. These things like this. Sometimes knight, knight B6, 
I mean, 97, 96, 94. But, you know, we, 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 we sort of uh, understand what is going to, what is happening. So this is now a still upon uh, sacrifice for line clearance, but now this is involving the whole board, involving, and, and also, you know, um, uh, 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 flexibility of thought. Uh, I, I will show you another game uh, just after this one where uh, um, um, Rubinstein plays, but he sacrifices uh, for the, on the king side, right? So it can be anywhere. But anyway, let's let's go pretty quickly uh, 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 past this game. So we have this this concept, and and we understand uh, uh, why Tamanov plays h3 because he knows the 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 the, the classical game. He knows that knight g4, knight g5 will come. So plays h3 to stop to stop this. But then the knight goes to b6, and the knight is interested to get to c4. Uh, okay, and then uh, bishop uh, g5, a strong move because prophylactic thinking. What does black want? Black would like to, sec to, set to support the knight going to c4 by playing knight d7, knight e5, and knight c4 at the right moment, right? So white plays bishop g5, stops this knight from uh, uh, moving to d7 because then e7 would hang. Knight e8 goes back. No, like this, right? Bishop c3, it grabs because now we, we are having a situation, a fantastic idea where it is black who is a pawn down but black is playing for the win, right? Because the structure that white has is weakened. White has got too many weaknesses. Let's look at the weaknesses that white has. Remember, what we consider as weaknesses in chess in terms of the structure are points which cannot be protected by the pawn, okay? They are weaknesses because you need bigger pieces to protect them. Now you look at white at, at black's position, it's, it's, it's compact. And white's position, some problems are there. Queen a5, and already you want to drop something, and he plays queen a6, then takes. Yeah, white is in trouble. Now, it's <clears throat> the material is equal, but white is still in trouble. Tries to get some counterplay, but it's not happening, because still, the problem is that the knight is coming to d6, and still having problems in, in the structure. It tries this. Knight f6 to stop knight d7. And yeah, just in trouble. Yeah. White has always been in trouble and not able to get out. Uh, and then in this position, he even blunders. Yeah. Probably time trouble. Rotates g2 check and 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 um he went and lost uh this game. Now um uh, just to to show uh um yeah, I had not put it on this um folder, but I think it's important for me to show you very quickly. And the idea here is to is to show that um you know the ideas in chess. Um when you see one idea, you need to be able to 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 be influenced to so that the idea can can be uh, in any position, right? Uh, but that means that um, you are going to have to, uh, uh, you need to know the idea very well, you know? And, and, and I think that you, one even has to, to, to memorize the idea almost, you know? So that you, you really understand uh, how the idea works and how, how you can set it up. Um, now this game, I'm trying to think very, uh, please bear with me, uh, Rubinstein. Uh, it? This one. Yes, it's this game. Okay, so it was Marshall. Um, very quickly, I will show you a game very quickly that um, Rubinstein played. Uh, similar idea, but now on the king side. Okay, so anyway, the the, the game starts like 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 uh, it's a queen's gambit, and then uh, they play like this, and then rook d1. So uh, Rubinstein is under a little bit of pressure, uh, but okay, plays bishop b7, and after taking, plays queen c7. So the 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 pattern now is the bishop on c4. So Marshall plays 
bishop d3, and Rubinstein sacrifices a pawn. Knight takes c5. Fantastic idea. Fantastic idea. Because it's the same idea as the one we're looking at, but on the king side. Because now Marshall takes and king g7. Have a look at that. That is chess. So now we have now on the king side, we're having two files. Again, we have now half open file h, half open g file. And this time we have a bishop on, on b7, cutting across and attacking the king. And this is even more dangerous than the Bengal because this is, is <laughs> the files are, are, are pointing directly at the king. Yeah, I'll, I'll go very quickly to show, you know, so Marshall tries to get the, the, the rook to defend and drops, what well, doesn't drop, you know, gets the, the, the piece is, is captured and so on and so on and so on. But um, uh, if you're interested in looking at it, I will just, because it's a little bit out of our uh, theme, but it's, it, it was played in, 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 in Ostende in 1906. Uh, Frank Marshall against uh, Akiba Rubinstein. Very interesting uh, uh, idea, right? Okay, let's go back. So what I wanted to show you was this uh, uh, flexibility of thought that is, is needed in chess. It's, it's, it's very important in chess that when you, when you, when you play, you, 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 you understand that the concept is not to be memorized right okay it's, it's to be memorized to be understood but it's not like a, you know you're not like a, a parrot you know where you have to you say okay oh, oh okay wait in this position this is played and that no no you've got it wrong that it's ideas it's about ideas it's about what you know what should i do what what do i need okay i need two files i need a diagonal i need that i need i need uh, pawns on the same color then I can sacrifice and control the squares. And, and you can do this in any position. And, and your idea, you know, one of the things that they, 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 they mention about uh, uh, the current world champion, Magnus Carlsen, is that, uh, you know, they admire Carlsen because he's extremely flexible in a sense that when Carlsen plays, they say, you know, uh, many players have said this in, in interviews, you know, that when they, they play Carlson, they feel like everything is ever learned in chess. It's, it's, it's as if it's available. They know it too, but it's just that Carlson, when he plays, you know, everything is learned in chess. He's, he's, he's always, it's as if it's open to him. And whatever can, can be applicable in a position, he will apply. He will, he'll be able to apply it, you know, and that is the, the key. The key is to is to is to push yourself to to to, to every idea that you've learned in chess. Uh, when you play, you want to 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 to, um, to to yeah to be influenced by this idea, right? Anyway, uh, we are going to to move on, and um, we will look now. Okay, where were we? Okay, so we are now going to look at um the, the the next player that i want us to look at is 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 michael tal and uh, tal played a, a number of uh, fascinating there were many players who were playing you know uh, uh, alekain uh, tolush nesmetinov uh, you know many very strong players who, who were playing this concept of initiative but of course tal took it to the next level because tal became world champion uh, you know, by playing many things, but mainly his main thing was initiative, ability to attack, um, and 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 feel the initiative. And um, uh, 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 this is this is uh, of course uh, important. But uh, before we look at Tal, I want us to look at Nesmetinov. Now, Nesmetinov uh, uh, played this this game. Um, uh, he was a Russian uh, uh, player. Master, very strong. He played this in 1950, and uh, so these these ideas that Nesmetinov used are still very relevant today. Yeah, let's have a look at this game. So now we let's see. Uh, he plays white, and uh, okay, they play some original position, and uh, yeah, he's just putting putting his pieces out. You know, and then all of a sudden, Nesmetinov 
uh, 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 he's got an idea here, a concept. And uh, what Nezmetinov does, uh, he sacrifices a pawn here, yeah? He wants the initiative. And, uh, but what influences him should be our question. Because what influences him is what should influence us. So what really influences Nazmetinov is the fact that the opponent has, has kind of uh, delayed on developing the, the king side and needs uh, more time. Uh, castling on the queen side is going to be quite dangerous, uh, you know, because white can push this pawn maybe a3, b4, c4, whatever. So uh, Nazmetinov castles and buys himself more time. The opponent plays knight takes e5, knight takes knight, bishop takes knight takes, and then he takes queen takes. So this is the position that he's playing for. But Nezmetinov is excited by this position because there's a pattern that he is. So now we realize pattern recognition. Remember, we talked about patterns as in, for example, the simplest patterns that we, we look at, the queen is on a white square, the king is on a white square, knight c7 check will win the queen and so on and so on, right? Because the, the, the queen and the king are, are both on the white squares. However, there are also the, 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 the most important patterns. Um, and every pattern is important, but the, the, one, the patterns that we want to use are the patterns we can create. Because if I see a pattern in my head, even if I'm playing Carlson, Carlson cannot see that pattern. So what I'm talking about is that if I see a pattern that I can create in two to three moves from now, I'm the only one who can see that pattern. This is the key, right? My opponent doesn't see the pattern. So, so, so if I can see patterns and I can, I can create patterns, I can, you know, I can beat anybody because then, then by the time they see what I'm trying to do, it's, it's sort of too late, right? So, 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 so the, the, the pattern that is interesting to, to Nesmetinov is the knight on e5 uh, 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 and the queen on d1. And the fact that queen d7 could be checkmate. This is, this is now something he's, he's, he's interested in. And he's, 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 he's now going to use this in terms of time. So he plays here rook e1. This is now powerful stuff. Uh, sorry. Yes? What if um, you play c4? Well, c4 White now play, yes. White plays c4. Yes, yes, yes. C4 like, can be played, but it's too early. Now it's my heart. I take, and then I attack you for the first time. A, and then um, I captures knight. He captures on f7. Like I, no, I but this am not Donald's son. Like he is my dad. I have his last name, and I want him and, to feel that. I want. Uh, him. Oh, 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 oh! No. I thought um, I can queen check. No, like, but I, I, yeah. I, I broke with the knight. Yeah, so. No problem, but the issue is that yeah, it's it, it, it's quite tricky. You 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 need you need to bring your the rest of your army. You need to get you, you need to bring more pieces before you can start to attack like this. So Nesmetinov plays rookie one. This is now very powerful because uh, he's thinking about going to d seven. So for example, if 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 Black plays a, a move like let's say e six, yeah, now. A, a move like c4 becomes uh, interesting, right? This becomes this becomes interesting because well, c4 is not needed actually. a4 a4 is more interesting uh, because the point is that you know if you move your queen, you need to move your queen out of d7, right? Now you move your queen. I don't know where. It doesn't matter. Yeah, uh, move your queen somewhere, and then maybe I can take on e4, and if you take uh, the rook, I can play queen d7 mate. So just as an idea, of course, uh, uh, you would have to calculate and, and, and make it uh, uh, clean. But notice what has happened. Let's go back a little bit and appreciate. So, you, you know, Nesmetinov is seeing this from here. He, he's seeing this idea from here. And, 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 and this is what is telling him that, okay, I'm going to sacrifice this pawn and I will be able to, to keep the initiative going because my opponent is not going to be able, you, you, you see what you don't want to do is to sacrifice a pawn and then your opponent, there are no threats. You sacrifice a pawn, but there are no threats. And the opponent can just play e6, bishop e7, castles, and then you are a pawn down. You don't want that. So you, 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 that's where the, 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 the patterns play an important role. 
a little bit of imagination and the patterns play an important role because you can build uh, from the patterns that are there ability to 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 attack the, the opponent so rookie one so now we see that why the opponent is 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 playing knight of six bishop g5 is coming and and now we uh, they, we see more ideas for example h6 the bishop the knight is never going to come back these are ideas now for example that are there in the position you know the piece is coming in Anyway, the opponent plays e6. Now he plays c4. Now we see this uh, 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 d7 idea. Uh, yeah, d takes c4 is obviously will obviously be bad because of a4, right? And queen d7 checkmate cannot be stopped. Uh, so uh, after c4, queen a5, and then he takes on f6 and takes on f7. So he just you know uh, opens up against the king. And again, notice the threats, you know. Besides rook takes e5 check, he's also got d6 check. Because the queen on a5 will hang. Pattern over pattern over pattern. So the opponent plays e5 and uh, plays f4. Uh, okay, queen takes d5 and then plays e6. Queen f7 check is coming. h4, queen g5 check is coming. So this and then queen h6 check and the opponent resigns so the, the, this is just sort of an introduction to 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 to, to patterns and um uh, but now we're gonna go to a player who you know who was actually pretty um uh, you know who was quite incredible when it when it came to 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 patterns the first game i wanted us to show i wanted to show you was a game that uh, Tal plays, and it's a game that we I feel we are going to identify with because now we we understood we understand the pattern, you know, the, or rather not the pattern but the concept, the method, yeah, that Tal uh, would would use in this game. So okay, they play like this, and the opponent plays Bishop to B4. So I'm hoping that that now our eyes are open to the fact that when the opponent plays Bishop B4, we're not even worried in the in the slightest about bishop takes c3 right we want the opponent to play bishop takes c3 because then they give us the black squares you know so tal plays bishop g5 and they play like this and then the opponent takes on c3 and uh, tal plays rook b1 so already tal knows that he's he's, he's winning yeah uh, rook d3 the black squares are the problem Queen d2, so now the threat is rook d1 and queen d8. So plays h5, rook d1, king e7, rook d3, uh, threatening uh, rook d8. Opponent plays queen uh, b6 to, to hold, plays e5, the black squares again. The problem now is that uh, you cannot play, you cannot take, you cannot play f5 because of queen g5, and it resigns. Yeah, very, very quick. Uh, we can imagine Tal walking around as he plays this 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 game. Um, okay, next game, very interesting, very very famous game, uh, an incredible game. He plays against the the Dutch grandmaster Jan Döner, and uh, let's have a look. So Tal plays uh, with the white pieces uh, here. Okay, they play a uh, French, and immediately. When this happens, I hope that everyone now sees what's happening. What is happening? Well, here we are. Uh, look at these pawns. Pawns are on white squares. The black squared bishop is not there. The black squares are available. Of course, this line is playable for black. Uh, you know, it's called the it's the it's the Vinava variation of the French, and black will 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 try their best to close these these squares. Black will try to make these squares not accessible for white. But let's see. Uh, that has never stopped Tal before. So we understand B6, yeah? Strengthening the, 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 the black squares and also with the idea of playing bishop A6 to exchange the white squared bishop. Okay, Tal plays A4. Uh, bishop A6 takes queen E2, uh, uh, knight B8, and Tal starts A5. Tal wants to, to, to rip open the black squares. 
so that the black is his black square bishop can be the star of the position. So he plays a5. Now look at the determination that Tal is going to go for in this game. The opponent takes, he plays bishop a3. Uh, opponent plays knight d7. He wants to open the, the, the right. So here we are. And what, which move do you think Tal plays in this position? Um, it shouldn't be a surprise to Excuse me? Like C3. C? C3. Ah, C6. Sorry, wrong C6. way around. My bad. No problem. C6. No longer, no longer surprises us. We, 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 we understand. We understand. We understand. C6. Bishop must get into the game. Queen C6 castles. Doesn't care about the opponent C3. Is not significant for this position. Why? Because uh, look at the pieces that are not in the game. We want the, our pieces to get in. Okay, takes the pawn, rook d1, uh, plays knight c6, bishop d6, because the threat was to play knight to b4 to close the, the, the diagonal. Bishop d6, plays queen c4. No, no, we don't want to uh, uh, exchange queens. We want to keep the queens in this position. Threat is queen b7, uh, knight b6, c4. Look at this move. I mean, it's, it's incredible uh, fantasy. I mean, um, in this position, uh, black is or white is already uh, 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 two points down, yeah? Uh, but gives another one. Why? To open up lines. White, the, 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 the piece that white is worried about is this rook. The rook on a1 is not in the game. So play c4 and... You know, all of them, if knight takes queen b7, of course, yeah? Uh, if if d takes c4, he will play queen b5. Uh, so queen takes c4 is first. Now queen a3. Now rook c1 is, is threatened. You know, the threat now is rook a to c1. Incredible. Queen a6, rook c1. All the pieces are in the game. Knight goes to d2. f6. Okay, grabs. And queen... Uh, f3 still not 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 able to escape uh, with the king queen h5 is coming king d7 queen takes f6 now the problem is that the knight is is coming into the game so if you take here there's knight e4 check and uh, like this and uh, game over Re practically yeah uh, you'll be mated so uh cannot take place rookie eight knight e4 very very powerful move I mean, now is threatening knight c5. Uh, knight, you cannot take. Yeah? Plays knight c7, knight c5 check. Bishop takes. Uh, bishop takes e7. The queen is hanging, yeah? Uh, that's why they call him the magician. <laughs> they call him the magician from Riga. Because, you know, he, I mean, he, he kept playing... Uh, in this manner, but okay, you know, he was playing like this at the highest level, and um, he managed to become to become uh, the the world champion. So, but anyway, uh, yeah, there were also other games that I wanted us to talk about. But what I can do is give you some names and uh, uh, players that you know you would have to study to 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 see more of this method. Definitely, Michal Tal. Uh, you, you definitely have to study this guy. Um, then uh, also Boris Spassky was world champion, but in his younger days, you know, Spassky in the 60s, uh, 50, late 50s, 60s, uh, if you look at his games also, incredible player, incredible player with the, with the, with the initiative. Um, then um, today, then up to uh, uh, Gary Kasparov, yeah, look at Kasparov as well. And you will see this 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 concept. There are other players as well, but I think you know these players. If you look at at their games, and and uh, and uh, you will start to 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 appreciate. And then what you can do then is uh, after you've studied them, just go and practice. You know, play uh, some five minute, ten minute game, and with the idea of playing for the initiative. And 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 whenever you, you you see these ideas, you try to play them out. Um, yeah.
I don't know if, you, if there are any uh, questions or, or, or comments. Just want to say thank you very much for the lecture, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I want to... I want to thank you for the training. Um, it was good. Thanks. Then we'll come back and try to figure it out. You're welcome. I'm happy that you 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 found it useful. Yeah. Okay. If there's no questions, I suppose we shall end it there. Thank you very much for the session. I think it was very informative. And yeah, have a good evening, everyone. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank Wait. you. Thank Wait. you. Are there like any games which are basically point sacrifice? Like those are the basic. Um. Yeah, I sent. I sent just the games that we looked at. I. 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 I sent to. To to coach Andrew, so she, he can just forward them to you. That you know you you can look at and then. Uh, uh, yeah, you can just have a look at Alekine also, you know, the players that we, we, we were looking at, Alekine, Tal, Nesmetinov, um, uh, Kasparov. Uh, yeah, just have a look at their games. But of course, you have to understand that it will not be each and every game, but, you know, uh, yeah, you just keep looking at the games and there will be games where they play with the initiative. Okay, thank you. Welcome. Okay. Good night, everyone. Thank you again. Thanks, Michael. Good night.